In Microsoft Word, we can change settings so that there's a little space above and below a paragraph, and that can make things easier to read. There's nothing similar in Excel, though. We can indent the left side a little bit using the buttons on the ribbon, but we can't add space above or below the text. I could carefully adjust each row, but if I double-click on one of these borders to auto-fit the rows, it gets rid of any adjustments that I made. I'm going to add a new column to this table, and I'm going to put a formula in that column that will ensure there's a minimum height for each row. So even if I use that auto fit feature, it's not going to shrink it down right to the minimum. I'm going to click here and I'm going to call this column spacing. And it automatically extends the table to include that. So in this column, my formula will use the repeat function and it will put in line breaks using the char, the character function. So to start, I'll type an equal sign, then REPT, open bracket. I can specify what text I want in there and how many times it should be repeated. I'll type the character function now, CHAR, open bracket. The character that I want to use is number 10, and that is a line break. And I'll close the character function and type a comma. And now I have to say how many times I'd like to repeat that. I'll use two in this case. And then close the bracket. Then I'll press enter. And because this is a table, the formula has filled down into all the rows. This cell is formatted with wrapped text. And then I'll have to select all the rows again and auto fit. This row height seems a little too high. There's too much white space now. So I'm going to click at the top of the spacing column to select all those cells. And then on the Home tab, I'll click the font size. And as I point to a size, it shows me how it's going to look. So 8 looks about right. Or I could type a number in here. I could type 6 and press Enter. It gives me a little bit of white space, but not too much. Another place that this function is useful is if your table has pictures. So here I've got a table with little pictures in each row, and I've been careful when I add them to make sure that the top left corner of the picture is within the cell. I've got the properties set so that these pictures will move but not resize with the cells. But if I sort, perhaps I want to sort by the location, and when I go to the Data tab, A to Z, it does keep the pictures so that the top left corner is in the correct cell, but because the row heights are all different, those pictures are getting messed up. So I'm going to undo that. I'm not going to add a new column. I'm going to put the formula right in the picture cell because this picture is just floating over the cell. There's nothing really in that cell. In this case, I'm going to need a bigger line height. So I'll repeat the line break five or six times. So I'll click here and type equal REPT open bracket, and then the char function, open bracket, and the 10, so we get a line break, comma. This time I'll repeat it, I'll try five times. Press enter, double click here, and that's a little bit short, so I'll undo the double click, and I'm going to change the formula so it repeats six times. Press enter, and I'll adjust the row height, that looks good. So I'm going to select all of the rows in the table, double click. Because it's a table, they all get the same formula. So each row is the same height now. And I can safely sort it by this field. And everything sorts in the right order. Because the rows are all the same size, each picture will fit in each row as it's sorted. So use the REPT function with character 10 to repeat line breaks in a cell and create a minimum row height for a table. For more Excel tips and tutorials, and to download the sample file for this video, please visit my Contextures website at www.contextures.com.